you must be mentally prepared as i said the mm. you can lose your mind literally because of a game like that and i mean i didn't know what it was going to play whole day every day as a reality show when they make a reality show yeah. there are parts where they say cut and then you can say hey, your dog now i'm fed up let's take a break whole day every day mm. and i'm very moody in the morning <laughs> you did but because i prepared my mind to stay there and win the money that's how i survived Good level on culture. Hello and welcome to yet another episode. Um yeah, thank you very much for joining us. That has been a minute actually since we've had an, a moment uh, with an interview we as well. Big shout out to Khao Khelo Sebata who is our videographer as well. Today's guest uh, was Big Brother's contestant, Big Brother Mzansa season 3. Uh, um, I forgot your name. Well, my name is Temba. Temba bro, yeah. I was teasing you about that. Uh what what would you do if someone uh, called you something else? Yeah, no, nah, I'm chill, bro. You okay, wouldn't walk yeah. out. Nah. You look scary. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to mess around with you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. I really really appreciate you. Thank you uh, coming you. through. Um You were saying to me before we started this conversation that you enjoy boxing. Yeah, yeah, I do. That's enjoy interesting. Boxing. I just love boxing, bro, because I feel like it's a sport where you don't rely on another person, you know. You don't have to have a group to win. It's up to you what you do in the ring and how you move, yeah. Would you be willing to lace gloves? No, nah, of course not. <laughs> Particularly in the climate of celebrity boxing matches. Nah, no, dog. I don't want anything to fuck with my face. 500,000. Nah. 700,000. Nah. Maybe a billion. Fuck that shit. No, one's, no one is going to give you a billion for yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm not going to box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to box, bro. Yeah, but do you enjoy like are you Do you have people that you've over the years looked up to as one of the greatest boxers that you of like? Of course, and a lot of them. Yeah, a lot. Sure. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, mm. Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, nice one. Mike Tyson is interesting because he was a world champion at 20 years of age. Yeah, he was the scariest man in the world. The baddest man on the planet. Yeah, when he yeah. was 20 years. He was 20. Yeah, that's ridiculous to be a 20 year old. That's and feared. a world champion. Yeah. Yeah, and 35 or 50 year old men fear you. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I like boxing too. I'm closer and it's part of my culture in essence because um there's very it's it's, it's very seldom that you find closer people who are not aware of who's boxing. Yeah. But the interesting thing about boxing and the modern era is of course the celebrity fights. Yeah. Uh, Nick Music, Casper Nyvest, who were you rooting for? Well, I chose Nick and he won. I was there. I was watching the fight. I was in San City. I'll take your word for it because everyone seemingly is like Well there's an interview okay. of me saying it. Dope. Nice. Yeah, so at least they are receipts. Yeah, just before the fight I yeah. I said it like yeah. What was that, what was it about him that you you thought okay I like this guy? I just felt he's bigger than Casper, but I don't like Casper uh, looked uh, ripped. He was faster. That's like I thought, I was I was in the middle. I was but I chose Nak. Mm. Did yeah. you enjoy the actual spectacle? Besides yeah. you being there in Sun City, I mean, whenever there's a congregation of many people, even mm. in church, mm. you feel the euphoria and you think that the something is better than what it was really. Mm. But when you look back now, was that a better, a decent boxing match? Yeah, it was. It was. It was a decent boxing match because both of them gave it their all. Mm. And cons- considering the fact that they are not bo- professional boxers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell around round two, round three that okay, cool. <laughs> These niggas are cast out now. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm sure someone is going to think about giving you an offer anyways about boxing. Well, I'm not going to take the offer. I don't want to box. Plus I have an operation on my hand. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have, I have still plates here. Yeah. So okay. That's understandable. Boxing. So yeah. you literally out of boxing. Yeah. Nice one. Um what's happening to you in your life at this point? I mean, um I suppose it's probably the the most attention that you've received um mm. in the same period. Yeah. Um, Big Brother, popularity, women love you, there's go find me, 
over a hundred thousand raised within a short period of time. Um, how does your life? How is how different is your life now than it was maybe six months ago? Well, obviously, I'm popular now. I can't walk around the streets like normal. But I think it's gonna die down. Obviously, it's for now. It's the hype for now. But uh, I won't lie. I wasn't ready for this because I went to the house. And I didn't think with coming out of the house, I'm going to be this famous. I knew good people would know me, but not this much. Because mm. I literally can't walk uh, a mole in much. I have to cover myself. And it's hard to cover myself. You see, I have tattoos on my face. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I suppose I, I understand where you're coming from when you say it might die down. Yeah. I don't know if for you particularly it will because... You are distinct. You are particular. You stand out with yeah. your face tattoos and also the popularity. I think people love you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people love you. You you know that their idol winners uh, will win a South African idol in one year, and then seven years later we forget about them. Yeah. You know, you forget how they look like. Yeah. Um, but with you, even in seven years' time, I would argue that people will still remember how you look because you are distinct. You are unique in how you look. Yeah. Well, I won't lie. The look is very. Uh, catchy and it's hard to forget my face. It's very hard to forget my face, very. Was but I'm just saying with the the hype. You know now people are like, I walk into the mall, people run and scream. Yeah. But I think maybe in like a year or two, people will see me and just take a picture and go. You won't go crazy and balloons like they do now. Do you enjoy it? Well, I, I I can't stop enjoying it because I come from a place. I've been saying this to, to people. I used to walk uh, Emily and walk, uh, walk in the mall and people would look at me funny. But now walking to the mall, people want to take pictures. People are running to me because people understand now. Yeah. So I I definitely do enjoy it. Is it distracting? Is it is it something you would rather not have? I, I would say this about myself. With the small popularity that we had, I have another YouTube channel with yeah. former soccer players and we, we blew up. And because I'm a reserved person, yes, I'm uh, I'm art too mm. uh, in the things that I do. But I'm a reserved. I would rather be alone for maybe a year straight without human interaction. Mm. I know that it's a, it's a distraction. I know that it's something you consider. Oh, this place has football fans, so I might have to be stopped and start and stop and start. Mm -hmm. Do you have moments where you like? I, well, I would rather not today. Well, yeah, obviously, maybe almost every day I have that moment. Uh, because there's some things like you want to go eat, maybe buy food, but you need to go with somebody to go in and buy food for you because you can't go in there. You know, you're never going to leave. You're going to be late to when, wherever you're going because people are, are going to want to take pictures mm. and I love uh, taking pictures with people mm. and I, I don't like saying no to people because you, as you can see, with P, these people love me so much. So I would rather give back the love. But there are moments where I just want to go in, eat, and go. You understand? Mm. But I can't stop people from coming and taking pictures. And I can't be annoyed or irritated. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's some of the, one of the yeah. things you learn. Is that yeah. You can't say no uh, without having an article written about you. you uh, 24 hours later. You see. Because someone is going gonna, is gonna to inform a tabloid magazine that mm. you refuse. But I won't lie. I, I, I really appreciate people coming to me, taking pictures. Man, I was a nobody. I come from Alex. Everybody knows that. So people coming to me, taking pictures with me, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can't complain too much about that, man. Sure, nice yeah. one. Um, face tattoos. We understand that you are a tattoo artist. You are really a multifaceted person. I think you are yeah. fascinating. You do music, you do a lot of things, you design. Um, but the face tattoos, deliberate decision? Or a yeah, big mistake it was when you were like, younger? Nah, I did my face tattoos. I was, I was 26, I... Yeah, I was 20, 26. I was working in a call center. I worked in a call center. I, I, yeah, I was working in a call center. So I I decided to do a face tattoo because I knew what I want to leave. I didn't know what things were in done with my life then. So I just did the face tat and went to work with the face tattoo. And then my boss was like, but you can't come to work like this. I'm like, these people don't see me. I'm talking to them through the phone. But maybe five months after that, I left my job and then started the tattoo shop. Do you remember what, because uh, I worked in a call center too when I was hustling, uh, do you remember what products you were selling? How would you sound? So this is how mm. I would sound. I was doing something for Vodacom yeah, yeah. and I was 20 years old. So it would be like, 
Good day, you're speaking to Nkululego. How can I help you? Exactly. And then some shit exactly. like, my exactly. SIM card is not working. <laughs> yeah, All right. Good, uh, yeah. What's your cell phone number? So do you remember? Um, well, I worked in a lot of call centers, bro. Insurance, cell phones. Uh, at, at, at one point, I was selling sheets for Lee Morgan. Uh, credit clear. So it's just a lot of... The same thing, you know, our calls are recorded for safety and quality. Yeah. Reasons, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I worked in the call center, but yeah. then I left because it wasn't for me, bro. Every Absolutely. time I went to work, I was fucking irritated. I think yeah, yeah. yeah. I, me too. I think it kills your creative spirit. Maybe if we can dwell on that as well, mm-hmm. um, because a lot of the people are going through that. The monotony of doing a job that you don't like. Uh, ironically, last night I was reading a book. Um, it's called bullshit jobs yeah you know going yeah. through the motions of going to a cubicle every day yeah. uh, eight five um you know 12 hours straight or sometimes 10 hours straight and being stuck in traffic um what did that take away from you i know it fucking almost killed me if i didn't get away from that environment i would have killed myself yeah it took away a lot dog i, I just uh, i lost myself because of that you know because i started working in a call center when i was young i was a pastor so i left the ministry mm. i had i had no nowhere to go and nothing to do i was 20 I, yeah i was 20 i started working 21 i was 21 i started working in a call center because of the money was good at the time because i was still young for a young person i had no kid nothing like that so it was okay until after a year after a year then i couldn't take it no more because i knew which i don't love what i'm doing even though i'm making sales i i just don't love what i'm doing so it was hard for me to to work there so i left the job man and sure. started a tattoo shop all right um do well, something you love something better than a call center is you doing publishing stuff yeah uh, i was reading recently and uh, i suppose this is about that yes yeah, uh, the publishing i'm so sorry for breaking your rhythm because someone just brought these yeah. uh, books with us uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, the publishing deal and what it means whether yeah. or not you are the actual publisher yeah. and and whatnot um but how did you escape that just finishing up on the story of the call center how did you escape that well i had to make a, a very tough decision bro uh i left my job i had nothing to do uh but I knew that I want to do something in the art, you know? so I decided to I, let me just try. I I just got a new friend, really, Trevor. He's here with me, sure, Trevor nice and one. Jugza. He's a tattoo. They are tattoo artists. So I just decided that you know what, let me just join them. So we started working together until we opened the shop together again. And then we opened the shop and mm. everything went forward from there. Mm. Uh, shout out to my baby mama also because she never gave up on me, bro. Uh, when I left my job, she had to be alone, taking care of the kids. I was helping La Pana La Papa, but she was alone. But she knew what he, my dream is for me to be a tattoo artist and all of that. So I'm here now. I'm happy. Yeah, I yeah. mean, one of the worst things that you can do is to live uh, a place of safety with all of your installments monthly or DSTV, your yeah. house, all of the financial commitments that you've made. Because yes. uh, I remember like that, that I eventually made a name for myself in football yeah. as a journalist, as a media personality. Yeah. Uh, but this, this, this transition, switching from call center to football, to that, it yeah. was so nervy because it's like, oh shit. Because you have debts. I have that. a house. I had yeah. a house at the time I was 24. And I, what the fuck am I going to do with this house? Mm. You know, what, what happens? But fortunately, things worked out eventually. And then the tattooing, was it always something that you did or you did it immediately after uh, the call center? Well, job? I always loved tattoos, like getting them, you know, getting tattoos. But I wasn't a tattoo artist. I was just getting them. So obviously, wherever I went, because I had tattoos on my face uh, and people were like, hey, can you tattoo me? They didn't know, but I don't do tattoos. Sure. But because I have tattoos, people were offering me with them, can you tattoo me? How much? So I saw, with, no, people are asking me to tattoo them. Let me just learn this and do it. And looking at the fact that I love art, value, really, drawing, it has been my thing, drawing, painting, and all of that. So I decided to give it a go because I'm going to need with this business in there. Interesting. Um, what are some of the most ridiculous things that you've been requested? I saw a video of someone being requested be t- being tattooed in their vaginal area 
what yeah. are some of the worst things that you've done? Not worst, but maybe particularly interesting. It's private like, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've done a lot of private things. I've, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. When you're a tattoo artist, I think it's your, it's your job. Yeah, it's yeah. like a doctor, bro. You can't say no, Ulimele, on your thingy. I can't touch it. You As just have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Which areas would you be tattooed? I did everything. Or oh, not S, but I've tattooed... Uh, uh, pussy, every, I don't want to put every, everywhere, everything you can imagine, bro. Everything you know, people want to, what they How what long they does get. it typically take to tattoo someone? It depends on what they're getting. How big is the tattoo? How complicated? Typically, is it less than 30 minutes to tattoo someone? No, it depends. You, is some, there ever a tattoo that's less than 30 minutes? I want, I'm, I'm they, getting okay, someone. They, okay, let's say 20 minutes. Small, so someone tattoos. is opening their vagina for you for 20 minutes. Clearly, yeah, 100%. I need they want the tattoo. And you're not aroused at any point in that? No, nah, I need to be professional. So what do you do? Do you conceal the vagina? What do you have Yeah, a obviously you need to cover the to vagina. To cover it. And then tattoo around the vagina. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous too. But uh, but how, how do you, have you ever been tempted to... Uh, or someone tempting you to say, in exchange for this tattoo, I don't have money now. Let's See, spend. I, I don't play with money, bro. If you don't pay, you're not getting a tattoo. Mm -hmm. You need to pay. I don't do free free tats. Yeah, I don't. I don't play that game. I don't mix business with pleasure. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And then yeah, before we transition to other things, uh, your team was giving me some of your music, uh, and, and I thought that it's interesting. That you do music too. Yeah, bro. Would you consider yourself as a good musician? I am a good musician. I love music, bro. With or without auto tune? Yeah, with without. Are you a good I, I use auto tune, but I can sing without auto tune, bro. Okay, let's let this simmer in. What's interesting is that uh, you are the second, maybe it's it speaks to my limited experiences. Mm. You are the second artist from, or musician from uh, Alex that I'm impressed by how soulful, soulful they sound. I've, I've recently been introduced to a guy called Marcus Harvey. Marcus Harvey, I think. Um, I, I think I know and he's also from Alex, oh, I've yeah. been told when I look at his... Uh, profile oh, yeah. it's weird i know i've been around alex covering matches my money period games mm -hmm. and i know how hectic it is so it's very weird to find people that are soulful uh, yeah. musically in alex it's like yeah, Alex. Like so. um let's talk about your music then um is it something that you want to take seriously when was the song recorded i recorded this song last year i think so i have a lot of songs i think i have a, i have an album already but i hadn't dropped anything so for me, going to Big Brother was an opportunity for me to get exposure. So when I drop my songs, people There's know who it is. You so you know it's easier to drop when people know you and they buy your, your music. So I went there for literally exposure, my tattoo shop, and when I drop music, sure, because I take music very serious. And you still planning a date around when to drop or have you already yes dropped? i'm working on uh, on other stuff also with dj Tira, as you saw oh yes yeah. yes yes i was so, asking your team one yeah. of your team members will go to where, where how far are those conversations now oh well no we, we i can't talk on that right now because we nothing is finalized mm -hmm. but we are definitely going to work together we are working together on some stuff uh well i can't talk about them though but we are working together yeah, on some The one stuff. thing you need to give your fans yeah. is direction on whether or not an album will be, will be dropped and will you may or Album may will, will be dropped, definitely. And I'm going to put out a date for that album. Okay. But I want to structure the album, you know? I, mean, I can't just drop an album. I want to structure the album. And then once it's structured, I'm going to drop it. One thing about Tira, though, without dwelling on that, because I respect what you're saying, that you don't want to talk about it, is that he may not want the sound to continue. Or maybe it might be a negotiation to say, look, sound house-ish mm. and not soulful-ish, just for the um, purpose of commercialization 
in the music that sells and what doesn't sell. Mm. You, you may be persuaded to be more house. Well, I, I, I can't be more house. I'm just me. I'm just going to be soulful. I mm. can be soulful and go, go house most. Mm. I can sing on a, in a house song and be soulful still. So with me, music is music. You understand? So I, I'm a singer. I don't rap. I don't trap. So anything, I can jump on anything mm. and sing on that. I will, my piano, whatever it is. As long as I'm given a chance to sing, mm. I'm going to make it work. Yeah, you have a strong fan base. Um, mm. because for some, you, you know, it's very difficult to persuade South Africans to put their money on anything. Yeah. Even with whether there's a flood in KZN, black South Africans are very difficult to give their money for everything. Yeah. But what's particularly interesting about you is that your fans are so committed that they have, they've put money together to make sure that you get to the goal of 2 million and it's already in the hundreds of thousands. Mm. Uh, was that planned, expected, surprising to you? Well, no, bro. You're expected. No, not at all. It wasn't planned. It wasn't expected. I didn't even know what's happening. But I was in the house. I went in the house and I didn't... Know. I remember I told you people used to look at me funny. Only a few people understood uh, me because they saw maybe American television. Yeah. But naturally, when I go to the mall, I didn't go to the mall really. Because when I go to the mall, I get those stairs, people stopping you, asking what... So now... When I went to the house, I was a nobody. I had nothing. So when I came out, people are celebrating me. Do you understand the change? So I didn't plan anything. They planned it. Maybe I didn't even know what I was interesting in the show. I was just being me. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, was reading, I was reading something about why people find you interesting. And I thought that was, that was curious. Some of the things that they, they jotted down there was, that, was your authenticity. And I, I, I've thought about this over the last five days, knowing that you were coming through. And my summary of people in modern era is that they are, they are inauthentic. Um, they are bubblegum. They are cheesy. Why is it that they would identify with someone largely based on their authenticity? Because I can see the authenticity in you because yeah. I'm an authentic person. Yeah. But the masses, I think, particularly in the social media era, are not that authentic. So why would your authenticity gravitate towards so many different people? Yeah, well, bro, I was, I was just myself. Yeah, well, looking at a person like me, you think maybe I'm a cheese boy from somewhere. Sure. You know, people call me screw screw, whatever like that. But I just came in and never acted like a screw screw in anything. I was just a guy from Alex. I spoke my English from Alex. I, ju I, I was just myself, bro. I didn't lie about anything in the show. I was just myself. So people related to that, obviously. And that's why people, I think, people gravitated to me and they think that I'm on or anything. Yeah. Yeah, well. What do you make of that uh, format, Big Brother Mzansi? Big Brother is a franchise. There's Big Brother Australia, mm. Big Brother England, Big Brother America, Big Brother Nigeria, whatever. Mm. What do you make of that um, format? Putting people together in one house and having people to vote people out. And within there, there's internal conflicts and there are people that are forming groups and packs. Uh, what do you make of that whole format? Like, maybe you have thoughts about it. How can it be improved? Do you like it? Would you go there again? Well, I, won't lie. I, I wouldn't go there again. Unless maybe it's for more money. But not now, not anytime soon. You can't improve that system because it's not up to the system. It's up to the people in the house. The system is just there, it's put there. And then they can't, they can't control anything there because they don't tell you what's happening outside whatsoever. So you can't improve. When you go there, you have to be mentally prepared. You can't in, improve anything. It's literally putting people together there and let them be themselves. Some will be strategic, but not strategy. But I don't think there's anything to improve there. They can improve the games that we play there. They can improve how we eat there. They can improve how the house looks, but the game itself, putting people in one house and having them to to vote each other out, you can't improve that because uh, it's always going to be according. First impression, you look at a person, then you judge according to how you see them. Yeah. And then samba, you start to like that person and you voted for that person that uh, the first time and now you like them. So you can't improve that system. It's just going to be like that, I think. 
And your it's your feeling that you wouldn't go there again. I wouldn't go Unless there anytime there's, there's soon. Paper. Anytime soon. Because it, it, it you must be mentally prepared, as I said, the mm. And I mean I didn't know what it was gonna play a whole day, every day, no cut, no nothing. Whereas the reality show, when they make a reality show, yeah. there are parts where they say cut, and then you can say, hey, your dog, now I'm fed up, let's take a break. So I thought it was going to be something like that, but it wasn't. It was something of whole day, every day. Mm. And I'm very moody in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, so a lot of things, Jay Lapayana, I wasn't prepared for them. Yeah. But because I prepared my mind to stay there and win the money, that's how I survived. What did it teach you about human beings and the relationships that they carve for their own interests, how we relate to each other, how different backgrounds inform us and how we relate to one another? Like, meaning each is boy and all of a sudden I find a guy from Alex and we have to live in the same environment. And because uh, I'm a cheese boy, my, my mother and father are rich, now I'm struggling to relate to you. What did it teach you generally about, about it taught people? It taught me uh, you, about if you take away status, money, uh and what a person has people are actually good and people can live with each other and people can be around each other and people can learn to respect each other but it also taught me would see nobody is perfect nobody is good only god is good man because you have to make decisions that you wouldn't make so it taught me a lot of things man even uh human behavior how people act around certain certain situations because they are there and how easy how easy it can be for a person to lose his mind because of that you can lose your mind literally because of a game like that does it feel like imprisonment knowing no, that you cannot just it doesn't out? it doesn't feel like prison i think the only prison is yourself because you can literally say i want to go home okay then you will go home but because you are in your mind you told yourself i want the 2 million and I am not a loser, and I will not give up. That's the only prison there. Yeah. Your own, own prison. But the house, no, you can literally say, I'm going home. But it's not easy to say that because you told yourself, what, I'm going to win this money. I'm not a loser. I'm not a quitter. What are what are the terms and conditions of being there if you win? Uh, what are things that you... I know with idols, they make you record albums... <laughs> under a certain label that they will help you with are there any contractual obligations that even though you were a runner-up that you have to consider you can't say this about them you can't say that about them even for the winner what what are some of the paperwork that you have to navigate well through? yeah obviously there was a contract there but i can't speak on that also okay on the contract but there was a contract there that i had to sign yeah okay i think it's interesting to put people together in one place and let them behave the way that they behave um what were you were you ever on the verge of uh, a relationship there for people who don't watch it? Uh, were you ever on the verge of a relationship, I sexual intercourse, or whatever? Well, I, w- I wouldn't call them relationships, but I've, I've hooked up with a couple of people. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I can say. Oh, No, bro, not not sex. Were well, you not watching the show? <laughs> <laughs> go and watch the show. <laughs> go and watch the show. <laughs> I think you need to go and watch the oh, show. You then you'll get your answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, returning then. Um, what kind of life are you returning to? Uh, you spoke about your baby mama and mm-hmm. your children as well. Is it one child or multiple I children? I have two kids. I have two, two kids. kids with the same um, woman. Yeah. Cool. What are what are some of what are the things immediately that you have to return to to remind you what you are still who you are? My kids, obviously, mm. my kids, hundred percent. I need uh, even in the show. If you you, it's just that you are not watching. I used to talk about my kids a lot. I missed my kids, mm. so obviously my kids. And what is your routine now besides the interviews? Because I was asking uh, members of your team, what you. Are you now back on the treadmill of being a tattoo artist every day? Or is it more of these interviews are distracting you so you can't really go back to that? What is your immediate plan? Yeah, this in, there's just a lot of things that I'm doing. I'm trying to get uh, deals and all that. There's a book now, interviews, you see. I, so I'm, I am a tattoo artist. I will never stop being a tattoo artist. I want my shop to be bigger. 
I'm going to make a bigger shop. But I have partners that I work with. So they are, they are there holding it down for now. And then, but from next week, I'm going to take, I think, a few uh, house calls for some people just for me to, you know, because I always said, I miss umshin, I miss a tattoo machine. So from next week, I, I think I'm going to go back to a routine. But I, had a, I have a lot of things to do right now. Bookings, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's something with uh, a publisher that you announced recently. Um, it's a deal or a relationship that you've just inked. Uh, just tell us about that. What are you doing? What are you selling? Are you writing a book very soon? Or are you in the process of writing a book? Well, considering the, the, how the book is uh, selling now, I think I'm going to write my own book. But for now, it's a partnership that I have with the, at this company. So it's a partnership where we're selling the book together. Yeah. What, which book? Your book or you selling books? We're selling books. Okay. So we partnered on this book. Okay. The this same one. book. Yes, this book. A 10-minute guide to starting a business yes. by Sandy So Ngobe. That's a very nice book. Okay, cool. You should read it. So we partnered with that book because I saw it is a good book, so I agreed to, for us to partner. What does that mean exactly? To partner with a book? Is it mean? Does it mean that your obligation is to make sure you advertise the book? Um, no, not really. We're selling the book together. It's like we it's, you, we own the book. To, I own shares for 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 the sales of the book. Okay, I see. Yeah. It. I see. I see it. I mean layman's don't understand some of these things i have partners mm. in different businesses too different, so yeah. i get it i get it that you would get revenue from the sale of the book yeah. as a result of that but what is what is your in in that like what what was what attracted you to partner up for this um, and what did you have to give away to make sure that you get a percentage of it you see looking at me you think i'm a guy who's gonna go out leave the show and start maybe selling t-shirts you know i am gonna sell t-shirts but also, I wanted to show people, Logoti, don't look at a person and think, Logoti, ah, because you have tattoos and like that, you, you don't read books. You're not going to go into that type of business. And to open people's minds, Logoti, hey, instead of you selling T-shirts, you can sell a book. You know, you can make a movie. Bigger things, just, mm-hmm. yeah, but, yeah. So me uh, partnering with them is because I read the book and I was interested in the book, and they approached me with, hey, we can see that you, you love the book, so can you partner with us to sell the book? And then there's a percentage, obviously, can't say how much, but a big percentage sure. that is coming to me. So this is literally mine and his book. Mm. Yeah. Is this a new world for you? Um, were you trained um, in making those financial decisions? I know with myself that, um, I had to navigate a lot of those things by myself because I came up from townships and um, no one really advises you about financial literacy. Yeah. Um, when I is I did you teach yourself uh, yeah. in getting into this world, or do you come from a family background that enables you to know that you can invest in these things? Not even, bro. Not even. I just had to teach myself to move around and and just to get a lot get around because Lang uh, Pumakon. I mean, people don't read books, you know. But it's, this is to open people's mind, to read books. Yeah, well, so I wasn't trained. I just did it by myself. Obviously, there's a team that's working with me. There's a lot of people who are working with me. There's Delia. I have Delia. I have uh, TK. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of people that are helping th- me through this. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't trained for any of this. There's a lot of things that are new to you that you've never gone through. Um, one thing that I know is a common experience across all of us who meet success, uh, women, um, how do you learn to say no? And how do you know whether or not the one that you're saying yes to might not put you in trouble and there's a rape case in future and so on and so forth? Uh, how are you navigating that world really? Well, I haven't been with anybody for now since I went out of the house, because I'm avoiding those kind of things. You understand? But with me, I don't start like a relationship, a a friendship. We need to have a friendship. I need to trust you. I need to know who you are and be with you for, for, for some time before I even start a relationship with you. Because I've been, obviously, 
doing things, you know, just playing around. But mind you, I'm 30. I'm not in a stage where I want to be being a player or anything like that. I want to, I did say it in a show with next year, I want to get married because I have two kids. Yeah. I don't know if it's easy to say no, though. Well, it is easy. You just say no. It's easy, it's easy to say no. You just say no. <laughs> I don't believe that shit. Nothing is hard. You just, but you need to say no. I know more. saying no is easy. It's just two alphabets, N-O. Yeah. But, pussy. Yeah, I need to tell them that you, you need to send... Like, I was in the house for three months. And sex was very limited there. There was no sex. So if I could do it <laughs> for three months... The between no sex and very limited Yeah, sex. but it was no sex. Literally, there was no sex. But I'm saying, with, if I did it for three months, I can do it for six months. I can do it for a year. I'm not going to die. There's no pending cancel him rape case anytime soon. Nah, I don't want any of that. Just want to make sure which my life is... Proper. But I think just to be serious now, um, mm. I think you you have maybe a decent strategy in that friendship if you do it. Friendship, because Mina, I struggled with it um, mm. a lot, a lot, a lot. You go to stadiums and people recognize you; they want to be on camera, mm. and all of a sudden you are in a hotel somewhere, whatever. Yeah, well. um, and it happens continuously, and it's uncontrollable. But if you do what you say you're doing, uh, friendship first. Get to know the person. At least it's a better vetting system than meeting a stranger and sleeping with a stranger and all of a sudden yeah, a police station. Yeah. All of a sudden a police station. Yeah, you see, it's a problem. So I'm avoiding all of that, man. Avoid. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying my conversation with you. I really um, have to say that. Um, the one thing that we, of course, we've touched on a lot of things that you're currently doing, um, but I like talking about this with men. The one thing that we struggle with is that our value is attached to our ability to provide yeah. as men. Um, what have been your experiences with that? That you are only, as a man, you are only important because you can provide. Yeah. If you cannot provide, you are not important. How have you navigated that in the world coming from Alex? And is that true to you too in your personal experiences? Yeah, man, you need to provide. For me, I believe in that also. You need to provide. You cannot be a man and not provide. But sometimes, bro, that's why you need to get somebody that understands you and you understand that. If you're an artist, sometimes you will not be able to provide. So you need to be with somebody that even when you're struggling, They'll be there for you. Yeah, bo. Not financially, but understand that right now, if we were, we were buying a cruiser, 3,000, now it's going to be 1.5. Somebody that understands the situation, which I'm an artist. I don't have a monthly salary. Mm -hmm. But as a man also, you need to make sure, Guti, you always have money. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Make money. It must be very difficult for a man who cannot make money. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like It's very hard, man. If you're not making money and you're a man, you that's why people end up being depressed, Baba. Baby mama drama, all that. Because they can't provide. It's dehumanizing. Yeah. You are not a human until you prove to me that you can provide. Well, some can take it for some time, but after some time it's like, I, but guy, I've been understanding yeah cool um what are some of the projects that you're planning to do now as we wrap up our, our conversation um we've spoken music we've spoken big brother um are you looking into uh, w w acting we spoke about the book as well are you looking into acting i want to create so much bro as, as a creator like i look at what offensive Mwasa is doing on youtube mm. and some of his videos and i'm like fuck I want to create movies on YouTube for an hour and I just dump there. Yeah. Of course, you have to spend maybe two, three 300000 mm. paying people who are actors for you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a creative person too. So for you, like, what are some of the grand ideas you have in your head now? Well, I don't want to box myself. I'm open to a lot, to anything as long as it's the art, Debo. But I don't, I don't like doing something that I can't do just because of money. 
whatever I do, it has to be perfect. It has, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. So it has to be perfect. Uh, so I'm going to look at clothing right now. As I said, Uti, I, I want to release a mesh. So I'm going to look at clothing. I'm going to make sure that I drop very dope picture, uh, uh, clothes right now. Mm. I'm not an actor. I'm not good at acting. But if somebody approaches me, I'll go to, I'll take acting classes mm-hmm. just to make sure what I don't want to go there. It and might be limiting for you though, looking at your your aesthetic. It might be limiting what kind of roles you could. Get. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. With the acting is not for, it's not my thing. But if they approach me for that, I'm going to take acting classes. But my thing is art. Everything that has to do with art, that's me. And in terms of your clothing design um, and the t-shirts that you want to do, do you see it going the route of drip and battle, like being a big brand? It's going to be big. People, that's why uh, people won't see it coming, but it's going to be big. I know it for a fact. It's going to be big. But that's why I don't want to just do t-shirts and just throw anything out there. Sure. I want them to be proper. Hmm. Have you looked at... Clothing. Yeah. Have, you, have you looked at in terms of what route you want to take, whether you want to go China, order, and then just print your, your, your brand across. How would you want to do it? I'm doing my, res- my research on that right sure. now. Right. That's why I'm not going to just anything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm doing my research to make sure with my it's Yeah, because one, one of the things that we've we we been discussing with, about Drip and Batu is that, yes, it's a South African brand, but in essence, effectively, it is a Chinese brand from the actual the actual shoe. Yeah. The actual shoe. It's not mm. designed here. Uh, all they do is print is 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 is, is plaster a logo. Yeah. And this is not to devalue what they're doing. It's yeah. incredible that what they've allowed us to think. Oh, it's possible to mm. do this shit. But of course, the maybe the battle is 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 at a place where South African factory do it here so that it can be authentically South African, or you order fifty thousand. Uh, sneakers from just China and then you just place your logo in there yeah. so that's one of the things that you're going to have to think about as well of course you're going to you, you might have to go with the option that you can afford as opposed to because I yeah. think with the South African challenge is that it's more expensive at times to do something here at home than it is to do it in China, in China yeah, or understand. Thailand or wherever in, in Asia yeah it is so that's why I need to, I'm doing my research I need to know everything about that to just to find out everything but you are right. Uh, they showed us what is possible. So it means it's also possible to do it here also. Mm. Nothing is impossible. There you go. Uh, finally, what do you have to say to your fans? Bati Ghost Nation. Uh, yeah. They, they're giving you money for free. No, Ghost Nation, they know. I got them. I got them. <laughs> Those are my people. They're giving you money Those are my people. I, I love Ghost Nation. I, I, keep, I keep saying it. I will never get enough. I will never stop saying it. Which I love Ghost Nation. I really appreciate everything they do for me. Mm. I love those people. I, they don't. They they supported me when I didn't even know what I am getting support. Ghost Nation. I think it's it's going to be something that's gonna stay forever. It's not gonna be just a fan base, but we're still gonna go forward and do a lot of things. God will inspire me. God only stars inspire me, bro. There you go. You said you were a pastor, right? I point. was a pastor. Yeah, I was a pastor at some point. Okay. Thank you very much, Tema, for joining us. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Boom.